if the list is one of the way to promote the ESD. Yeah. So, uh, is there any saturation of the uh, working group today? Yes, for questions. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So, uh, So uh, the first thing I would like to speak is uh, currently uh, we have many the most of the systems has its uh, URL thing such as Bazilla. If you, uh, we do have a URL thing, uh, uh, or we say we or say uh, we do have a redirection rule. So such as uh, we can have bugs.previously.org slash uh, bug number, but uh, it, if you click on that, it will be redirected to a very long uh, query string, which is not very uh, easy to memorize. And uh, may I just show this sure. yeah. One of the other rooms there, suffering from rather short people. <laughs> Try to put input some 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 suggestions and the stuff uh, help to keep the notes. Yeah, one thing is can uh, URL and uh, uh, which I I believe it is also used in our uh, uh, commit message. And it is inter integrated with uh, web subversions web interface or web. Uh, I think that is built by VBCS or VBC. As we stay on the GBC. So. For example, uh, I, I remember somebody uh, asked about uh, asked the uh, class admin to try to support. Uh, yeah, because for for the community message template, we have two fields. One is uh, PR, and uh, the other is uh, differential UI or differential revision. Right, and uh, the thing is uh, for the PR. The left field, left field is required to uh, fill just the ticket number instead of the full URL. But the differential URL, it is required to have a full URL instead of just uh, uh, the differential number. Yeah, that's the one uh, inconsistent part. Yeah, so. Uh, Uh, yeah, that's one thing we probably want to fix. And uh, well, for for those things, uh, uh, so one more comment. I yeah. I am not sure if we should use the two kind of subtracting or the editing system. For example, the public user can replace the valuable functionality. Mm -hmm. And a, a somewhat all about uh, functionality makes confusing, uh, make developers confusing. So some developers like uh, public user style uh, facility in a project, and the other older developers still <coughs> stick to uh, valuable. Right. So, 
uh, one one question for everyone in this room. So, uh, uh, it is possible to replace the current value of the public meal or not? I'm interested in this. The, the problem is that people have very strong feelings about uh, Fabricator and Bugzilla. Some people refuse to use Bugzilla and some people refuse to use Fabricator. So I have the situation with a new committer who has come in, who I'm one of the mentors for, but he has to open a, a PR in Bugzilla so that one of the people can review it on Bugzilla, but the other mentor will not review it on Bugzilla. He will only review on Fabricator. And I think this is it's confusing and yeah. foolish. It's a high barrier. But I personally uh, find the fabricator uh, UI to be to be incredibly frustrating. Mm -hmm. And um, I would have to see someone either write up a help page for you know three BSD users or something uh, because I, I'm like, where's the submit button? You know, it's in that box. Well, it isn't. Well, it's over there. It's it's um, it, I think it's not because I'm I'm simply old. I think it's a it's a bad UI. The, the workflow I like. So the problem is it's going to be very difficult politically to get people off of the one and onto the other or vice versa. So um, this, I, I think I think Fabricator is better for source review, but for problem reports, I, I don't think it's very it's very useful. I mean. I mean, they currently serve as different purposes, right? One is by Turner and one is by but, but there's an overlap, and we haven't uh, made it clear when you should use one and use the other. And so half of the, well, two thirds of the Forbes TRs <coughs> come in on Bugzilla, and a third come in on Fabricator. And since not everyone has an account on Fabricator, sometimes these reports just go nowhere. Everybody's got a Bugzilla. Account. And so everybody gets the email from the auto sign on Bugzilla. But in Fabricator, if someone has does not have an account, uh, there is no way they're going to be notified except manually. One of the things that's interesting from a survey data perspective is Fabricator is the least popular tool of everything surveyed, except including, for maybe Nats. Including the, the Bachman poll? Yeah. yeah it's actually less popular than Bugzilla, which is shocking. Mm -hmm. Uh, people, uh, the, like, the, the like Bugzilla's perfect. Fabricator, <clears throat> actually pretty bad too. Um, but like to see that, like, I mean, from a community perspective, it makes sense. People are used to, to Bugzilla, but they aren't. Uh, there's a long history there. But it, neither it of those. It isn't really well. that there's that long a history. Uh, that Bugzilla. My, my, yeah, that was really the thing I before, which I um, least yeah. Here. Uh, the thing is. With the Bugzilla UI, you can't do anywhere near the same thing you can do with the fabricator, but you can tell from one page every possible thing you can do. Yeah. And from fabricator, it's like, well, okay, how do I open a new PR? Well, it's it's there, it's hidden somewhere. So, um, and, and again, for, for just this doesn't work, I, I don't think fabricator is uh, an app. But if, if we move the ports, if, if we say, okay, now all ports changes go through this one or this one, I think we'd be a lot better off in this silly situation of half and half. So, That's a good piece of feedback. But, but the people, fabricator people, love their hate. Yeah. And it's, it's like, uh, I hate to say it in an open environment, but yet people either think that is the right. way that things must be or the way that things must not be. No one has no opinion on it. Yeah. You, for, for me, I guess uh, uh, we we will still have a uh, bug like the fabricator. Uh, those two system in parallel for for I'm not I'm not sure, but uh, we'll we'll do so, uh, for 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 a few years. And uh, uh, one thing, uh, one suggestion I heard is we need to have some sort of integration between those two systems, uh, such as uh, uh, if a uh, if, uh, 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 if one bug report on bug and a uh, differential on uh, uh, bug 
computer is connected, uh, when an update comes to one place, the other place will be notified. Yeah, that's one thing we probably can do. And uh, uh, yeah, as Charlie said, uh, those systems are served for different purposes because not every uh, bug report comes with a, a, a patch for fix. Yeah. So yeah, but for yeah, I know for 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 the ports, most of the ports PRs are just uh, maintain the update, which is probably uh, easier for for uh, to to be used in, in replication or even uh, 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 things like a pull request on GitHub or other uh, other systems. There's it's more a political problem than a technical problem. Mm -hmm. At yeah. that point. To, to do that, we have to require that everybody with a FreeBSD org address is subscribed to Fabricator. I mean, we'll be put back on that. I have no problem. What do you mean by sub subscriber? Uh, because you cannot as assign a Fabricator PR to someone who does not have a Fabricator account. Oh, okay. The accounts are pre-populated. Mm -hmm. And some people play with, like I say, a very strong opinion, but they're not going to use it, and there will be a few Handful of developers who probably name quickly, yep. alone, who uh, will have to be told you will be using this yeah. if it is to be a universal system, and that's an argument that I no longer wish to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's why I also um, I think we need a single sign-on system for both uh, contributor and the developers to register uh, one time and uh, not. Uh, that account can be used by, uh, can be used across all the services we have. Uh, I make one other point about the, the survey too, because I, I do triage things on, on yep. the web. Uh, the adoption rate for source committers is pretty high. The adoption rate for doc committers is almost universal. Yep. And the ports is just scattered. So it's, it's, there's almost no doc reports coming in on Bugzilla anymore. Everybody's successfully made a transition, and maybe that's because it takes the model to use it. Yeah, probably. But um, that probably. That probably wasn't the question you got, you asked on that, sir. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I could actually correlate Fabricator and, and Bugzilla usage based okay. off of the committer type okay. from the developer survey. Um, I have not done that yet. Okay. Uh, I, I, I would still think that it's kind of a technical problem uh, rather than. The, the, I think the motivation that we talked to a system like Fabricator at the first place is to have better review system because we cannot really do reviews on Bugzilla, like long reviews. So uh, as a documenter, uh, when someone submits a patch that's very large, and I have to point to, like, I have to comment on some line, or like, I have to do some in-depth review, or I have to have someone else look at it, I have to say, like, please, please submit this again. And then, the, and then here comes a lack of integration thing because right. we can't really track. But we can probably track the, the fabricator review from Bugzilla, but we cannot really track the back end. Right. You have to manually make it, like in, in sync all these data instead. So, um, and it frustrates everyone to have to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I personally, I'm, 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 I was doing that all the time and was uh, the majority of my. And uh, one thing I want to uh, uh, emphasize is uh, in this working group or in uh, January of project, my thought is uh, we are not we are not trying to canonicalize uh, or standardize the the way to contribute or do. But just uh, if you want to do code review, you will have to go to the picture. But my goal is uh, something like the the debate of uh, version control system. The thing is not going to, uh, the thing is not, the, my main point is not uh, deciding which version control is the best for FreeBSD, 
but uh, my goal is trying to uh, let uh, each person can contribute to 3 ds project with their own favorite uh, version control system. So the same thing for uh, uh, review system. I found that there are some complaints uh, about Bangia and uh, Bacteria is uh, we still have some um, uh, maybe all the developer uh, they I shouldn't call it like, like this. I mean uh, because in the past the the the, the re review process is just through the email and uh, we send the page as uh, inline email or as attachment. Then uh, the reviewer can just uh, open that page in his uh, email edit and then do the, uh, the the comment line by line and uh, just reply the email and then that will be integrated to the system, which works in the old uh, 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 when we when we were using the old uh, issue tracer. Yes. Right. But uh, uh, <coughs> I'm not sure if we can do the same thing for uh, Bazilla and Fabricator. Uh, if anybody knows uh, about this, is there anything? Did it import? Hmm? What was the question? Oh, my question is uh, currently uh, you can you you will get a notify e an email after a uh, uh, comment is met or. Uh, Patch is submitted to uh, Bazilla yeah. and uh, uh, Fabricator, but uh, some some people want to uh, just use email as the uh, to reply to yeah. to do a re uh, review. And uh, uh, I'm thinking if that's possible to do that or with NAS. Yeah, with with Bazilla, with our. I mean, the thing I one thing I want to do is. Uh, Try to try to fulfill those requirements with our current system. Yeah. So uh, because I don't want to see the the, the issue that okay our project is changing uh, uh, our review or but issue tracking system from this one to that one and uh, each transition we we lost uh, some uh, developers and the contributors. Um. So I used to run Bugzilla from around 2000 or whatever, and there is some Perl script that you can run that you can hook up to a mail alias that will read the incoming mail, mm -hmm. parse that, and then interact with Bugzilla right. and you know reply to. So that is a thing. I don't know why we haven't done that, but I know that GitHub supports that so that people can reply. <coughs> um, and I think that it's also possible in Fabricator, but don't quote me on that one. There are uh, barriers in general to the project making certain changes. That's all I'm to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess I guess the biggest problem of our current load maintenance of load system is uh lacking of manpower. Yeah. Um let's talk about that later. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we should talk about that later. Yeah. We can we can drink these problems away. <laughs> yeah. Or in, into a solution. <laughs> we'll, we'll drink them into a yeah. solution. Okay. Yeah, no, there's it, uh, with, with my core hat on for just a second. ACK, we understand, we've heard repeatedly, it's on our roadmap for things to begin to discuss and address. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's not an immediate we have other things in the hopper right now, so yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't expect that this can be fixed right now. But uh, what I want to uh, know is: is there anything we can help? So, this, trying to start this working group with, I, I, I want to. I want to uh, identify the people interested in this topic, and uh, all those uh, people might be joining the maintenance group of those services. Yeah, I'm already on, so <laughs> unvolunteer. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I don't know what's the best way to to uh, to to connect those things. I mean, um, uh, 
such as Kai said, the mean is always uh, 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 making of uh, uh, hands. But uh, we do have lots of people say, OK, I, I, I'm here and I can uh, provide help. But uh, uh, I don't know why those two groups never, never meet. Yeah, but, uh, I'm not sure why I can do to, 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 to solve well, this. if we start an IRC channel or a new lineup, uh -huh. perhaps that will, that will help to just, to just discuss these issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think your comment about single sign on is an important one. Yes. Um, and that's an interesting question because that's not something that the project has really any infrastructure for. We have LDAP, kind of. Right. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah have, uh, we have ParaRex, kind of. But these are, these are, we're, we're one of the few organizations, certainly one of the few open source projects, and most companies, even, I think I feel pretty comfortable saying, like, that are using these technologies at this point in time in the way that we are, where we've kind of unified and integrated some of this stuff. Um, a lot of organizations have moved to single sign on using SAML or OpenID or other things like that with external providers. Mm -hmm. We don't really use that in any meaningful way inside of the project. However, sign on with Google, sign on with GitHub, like these are things. And as a project, we haven't and uh, we haven't decided to use some of that stuff. Um, and so that makes some of this challenging. Mm -hmm. um, because we have other things that we're working on as the core team, it's not been our priority for us, mm -hmm. but it has come up as a conversation piece for us because we understand that this is a problem. Um, it just happens to not be the most urgent problem. However, I think that there is, um, there is an understanding that we will inevitably need to begin using some of these external services. Um, and that's an okay thing for us to do, but right now we're not, like core isn't saying like, you should go do this because frankly, we just don't have the bandwidth to go do that right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, I understand that. but you're pointing out, like what you're doing, what you're saying is exactly right in the sense that we could be doing things better for the project if we made use of these external services we're not able to better support the project because we aren't using some of these external services, right? Like SSL. Um, and I guess it goes back to what I said a bit ago, which is like, yes, act, we know, we're working, like that's a thing. But like, we also wish that we weren't in a position where core was having to go and address some of these problems as well. So I think if you can push on some of this stuff, fine, and if you need what I would call a permission slip from core to go like, run around and do stuff, yeah, come talk to Core, we'll like, make sure that you can make forward progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd like to uh, working on single sign-on system. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, I'm not sure how to, uh, because I guess I cannot uh, do it by home, personal, and uh, uh, that needs uh, modify uh, all the all the systems. So, uh, yeah, but the, today uh, in this group uh, we we don't have all the, the system. Uh, I mean, the maintenance of all the, those systems. Yeah, we don't have anyone from Cluster Admin. Uh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I, and I just got my uh, Kite and Ming permission last month, and uh, I, I, well, the biggest problem of the Kite and Ming is uh, uh, most of the things are un undocumented. Even yeah. for, for Alan Ju, he joined the uh, Kite and Ming for nearly two years. Uh, most, most the the biggest problem of him is he don't know he doesn't know how to how to do some things. Yeah. Not uncommon feedback. <laughs> <laughs> so one more point from me about the single sign on thing is uh, we have to split the problems uh, topics into the two things. One is uh, internal authentication. Right. 
and then another one is uh, authentication for uh, useful web services, including the uh, people outside the region. So we can uh, we have to make it easier to create an account, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, people can uh, make uh, let people to use uh, our uh, web service for development yeah. in an easier manner. So it's a, it, it's a good idea to use external uh, authentication service like uh, oh, uh, Active, I, I, Active Directory. Or, uh, oh, uh, sorry for uh, breaking, but uh, I, for, for me, I, 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 I am not saying uh, we should use any uh, external uh, authentication identify systems. No, no, no. Uh, I, I mean the, to uh, make the maintenance costs lower as uh, as low as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, one option for us to oh. use the external authentication service mm -hmm. only for uh, um, non services, so non-developer oh, okay. services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One one thing I uh, I guess we can learn from the uh, KDE project. Uh, if I remember correctly, they have a, a portal called uh, identity.kd.net, which is uh, everybody can register an account there. And uh, once you become a, a, a developer, uh, you will have some uh, permission enabled in that system. Then you can have uh, access to, to the uh, uh, digital repository or other internal systems. I think uh, that's something uh, we can try to we can, we can try to have. So uh, I don't expect we, we at first we we wish we need to have such a complete system. But uh, I think uh, firstly we just have a, a very simple uh, uh, application and uh, people who have. Uh, uh, previously account can log in with uh, three, four, three, four account and uh, their Kerberos password. Then uh, that web single sign-on system act as a, a, a OOS or yeah, I think OOS is the app for our identity, which can be used by uh, other systems such as publication. I'm going to take my core hat off for a second right now, because <laughs> uh, what I'm going to say is, is related to things that I've done in the past that is not currently been, been discussed really inside of the project. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we used signed SSH keys, and we would actually, you would log in um, SSO to, you. so if you wanted to go and get it uh, to log into a box, mm -hmm. you would have to use a signed key, SSH key, right? Mm -hmm. Except the signed SSH key that you would present to the server was short-lived. It had like a five-minute TPL on it, mm -hmm. right? What you do then is you would talk to a modified SSH agent that would authenticate you against GitHub so that you would do your signing credentials. It, you would get, uh, it would authenticate you against GitHub, then it would generate a temporary SSH key that has a five-minute TTL that then your, S that your SSH agent, now that you've authenticated, would forward on to the target host. Right? And this allowed us to, to move to a more, um, it allowed us to, to integrate SSH with something that was SSO that was tied up with you know the rest of your corporate access effectively that you had for the organization. Um, this was really nice because um, distributing the SSH CA cert is relatively easy and you can basically install it on any, any box and there's, there's nothing sensitive to that. It's unlike Kerberos where the Etsy key tab is a piece of privileged content, right? And that suddenly is a problem. Um, or the binding credential for LDAP. They don't have any of those problems anymore. And so you can assume then that if you get on the box, that the credentials potentially are gonna leak because all you're doing is verifying the signature, right? Uh, the, the, when you, um, that comes back from your modified SSH agent. Um, that worked really, really well. Um, I, I think that would be an interesting direction for the project to explore, but it's not something that is being advocated for outside of like me saying that personally, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
That's not something the court. I'm also interested in, in, in that idea. In fact, uh, uh, we also have a similar thing while I was working at Yahoo. Uh, <coughs> and we even uh, uh, integrate YubiKey system in, right. in that system. Right. Mm, however, uh, on the other hand, my uh, I am a bit afraid to push this kind of thing in an open source or volunteer based project because um, uh, having this kind of thing will raise will raise the 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 com complexity of uh, loading more so it's very easy to enforce this policy in a collaborative environment but uh, if we uh, increase the this kind of friction uh, again it's easy to lose con contributors potentially I think that that's like where we lose friction in the project is not in our SSH and authentication, okay. right? I think that we lose that because we're potentially not making use of state-of-the-art tooling or process workflows or processes, right. and that's the bigger problem, mm -hmm. not necessarily the ability to pull down and use an SSH key for something. Mm -hmm. um, the flip side of that is, is we have boxes in OSU that are largely unused because Cluster Atom won't, won't use and touch these boxes, and that's crazy, right? Um, because it's not an NY or whatever. And there's reasons for that, I get it, right? But at the same time, the fact that we have access to resources and people can't use them because they can't log into it, like, hey, this is a concern, right? How do you want to go and handle potentially, um, if we get our CI infrastructure running in AWS and we're continually spinning up and spinning down boxes, mm -hmm. that means that we need to have dynamic binding credentials to get back to you know our cluster. That's going to be complicated, right? We don't. Like generating a, a key Kerberos key tab file, who's managing the lifecycle on any of this stuff? That these are all really difficult problems. Or we could go change our authentication mechanism to go and handle an ephemeral compute force that uses a well-known, publicly available, distributed SSH signing key. Who cares? Like you know, cert CA cert. Who cares? Right? You can install it on your home box, and like I could let some other project member log in, and I'd be okay with that. Right? Um, so there's there's different approaches to this problem, um, and because that, because you can allow people to potentially install this type of a keyed system, um, it means that people could go log into like random home computers. Like I know people that have Power Nine systems that are more powerful than what the cluster and project has, right? So right now people just generate those keys um, and hand them out. But in theory, it should be easy to go and, and advertise that to other people that want to go and use that inside the project. Right now, the, those relationships are being set up effectively out of band, um, and that keeps it, the, the, the use of some of these systems, um, it, it, it limits the usage of some of these systems, which limits progress. Yeah, I also be, I'm also asked by uh, people if I can provide help for, for integrate the Hardware in, in OSU, and uh, which I I haven't find the time to 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 do that to do that. But uh, yeah, so let's back to to the list. And uh, oh shit. Yeah, the thing is, uh, subversion web, uh, we're interested of the subversion. Uh, currently, I think it's only uh, available in NYI, and uh, we do have uh, SVM mirror uh, in several uh, mirror sites around the world, but uh, uh, that. Uh, SEM web uh, is not available. So for for people from Asia, I always got uh, complained about uh, the SEM web is very very slow. Uh, well, another problem of uh, 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 making of hands in Kaizen me. 
Uh, but the one thing uh, here is I found that uh, uh, probably due to previous uh, system upgrade, uh, if you check the, 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 the if you are looking at the diffs of the, the uh, certain revision, you will find uh, some features like a four colored diff or a side by side diff doesn't even work. And I think the problem is uh, there are two problems here. One is uh, no software are uh, mending written uh, under the environment of Linux. And uh, oh, because uh, if you click on those things, um, you will find the output is uh, lacking of some uh, GNU tools. Because uh, something is, uh, they required uh, GNU diff instead of BSD diff. And uh, the other thing, uh, uh, the other problem of this is uh, for for all the uh, web service in our uh, in freebd.org is lacking of uh, uh, functional test or smoke test after uh, underlying system or the um, application software up updated. So. Uh, I'd like to know if there are any good uh, strategy to do uh, for for the maintainers and for both class admin and uh, <coughs> those subsystem maintainers to, to do a test. Uh, for 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 CI system, I for fabrication system, I have a personal checklist. I should go through after each update. And uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to have those things uh, be uh, more automatically. So is there any suggestion to, to doing so? I look forward to talking with you over dinner tonight. Let's see what folks come for some of this stuff, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna bite my tongue. And uh, do others uh, have any experience of this? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. I, I think we do have some uh, 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 tools for iOS at Yahoo, but uh, I'm not sure uh, how how can I bring those things and uh, uh, how do I have more people help. Um, maintaining those tools. Yeah. Um, so probably the smart state, I probably need to create an IRC or Slack channel to invite those people join and try to uh, try to I don't know, try to discuss more and follow the this working group. Or yeah, my again my question is how to how to uh, stop those problems. Uh, All right. I think it is only way to uh, solve this kind of problem is uh, we actually have like some case scenario for each uh, uh, service is like a BSD. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, uh, I'm not sure how much amount of work is required to uh, maintain the such a test scenario. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, traditionally, we just put the service public and uh, let the developer test uh, mm -hmm. during. Uh, so uh, in parallel, uh, using the uh, service itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want the more complete uh, state of the uh, so quality of the uh, service, uh, probably we have to uh, create uh, some uh, revision test right. uh, before, um, for example, upgrading the uh, service into a newer version. So it is uh, probably a service, a software specific, so some requires the uh, web UI uh, 
clear that um, he drives you in some way, mm-hmm. and that um, just requires the uh, uh, value script. So uh, I'm not sure what, what is the best way, but the, 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 the first step will be uh, just uh, having a uh, uh, test scenario for that view. The other thing is, I'm not sure uh, it is worth to 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 spend least amount of time to 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 maintaining of web services. Yeah, I am curious about uh, for how many people are actually complained about Google Cloud Review and side by side in in a few weeks. Mm, I didn't notice that much. <laughs> I tried it, but it's, yeah. certainly it doesn't work. But I'm Curious, how many people are actually? Yeah, I just I, I yeah because I, I I know this from my local community and uh, probably just two or three uh, 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 no no people are, are complaining about this, but uh, yeah I, I know this is not the the this is not a serious problem. But uh, the problem behind this is uh, we we ignore this. Thing. We we did, we don't we are not aware of this kind of problem and uh, these regressions. I think the problem is here is uh, who is now maintaining the UDC and how to submit the problem report mm-hmm. and uh, why the problem report is not uh, handled in a timely manner. So what is the problem? <laughs> I, I guess uh, UVC is maintained maintained by by Cas and me. So yeah. again, so <laughs> Cas and me or other cloud admin member notified about this problem, or uh, you notified the cloud admin? Yeah, I sent the mail to Cas and me, and uh, as usual, it's more like a black hole. Uh-huh. And it, Devs cluster has a list of uh, pending problems in the cloud tracking system or something like that. Yeah, uh, Cas Admin has their own uh, bug tracking system called the Admin Bug. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, 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 everyone can register an account there. It's separated, but uh, uh, last time, last time I logged in and uh, found that there are lots of backlogs. I do. Uh, I, I hate to be to be rude about it, but um, there are people in the project, including myself, who gave up submitting PRs to have bugs uh, quite some time ago because they were uh, not only not acted on, they were not acknowledged. Mm-hmm. So I think with that and bugs, we may have to start from scratch. What do you mean by from scratch? Uh, I mean, the, mean, do, uh, do, I the mean, PRs that are in there are probably so old, they're right. not applicable that you may have to dump all of those and start with new. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I thought you were talking about we but, need a new issue no, checking no, no, system. No, please not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of, um, uh, in the application space and with some other, other long running projects that you started doing is where if the bug hasn't received attention, you just close it. That way it's not showing as an open issue. Not that it's not fixed, but it's um, just that this issue is not has not received any attention, therefore it's not meaningful. Please feel free to reopen it if you're going to pick it up and do something with it. That way the number of open issues is reflective of the number of things that are in flight, should be in flight, or likely to receive attention, as opposed to Having Bugzilla, which or like you know, Jira is famous for this um, in my experience as well, where it just becomes a dumping ground for basically everything. I, and I've always I've always fought that on the uh, argument that that simply tells contributors we don't care. It may be the case. At yep. the same time, it's not that we don't care. It's just that we don't have the bodies, the resources to go deal with well, this problem, and, right? And some so of us do close stale PRs. Do try to say that and make it in a nice way, but the but the, the overall problem that that's, uh, is not being addressed by whatever technology we, we use yep. is that uh, we advertise send us 
above if you have a problem. Yep. And we simply cannot deal with more than 30% of those. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that come in, I can't do on this. We might as well tell the people, don't even send those because unless one or two people on the source mailing list happens to see it, okay. nothing happens. And then it gets closed by some new uh, bug busting volunteer five years down the road saying, well, this is probably stale. And the original committer, about 20% of the time, will say, you know, jack hatches. Uh, you know, why do you, why do you even tell me now? So I think we have to, you know, never mind, never mind, until, never mind the number of volunteers we've got. We've got to adjust user expectations of what previous, what problem previously was solved. And I think until we do that, we can have whatever technology we wish, but we, we need to bring people's expectations down. Because I, I go through these every day, and it's like, it's a literal, but I, 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 I do this every day. And it's like, I know that this PR will never be addressed. Yep. It's just not going to be addressed. And, but I hate, I especially hate to close one that's got a patch, even if the patch is probably junk, because that's just saying, you tried to help us, we said screw you. And that loses us. I, 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 I am absolutely convinced that loses, it loses us possible contributors. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that latter one is probably the first to get addressed, which is somebody submitted a patch, it's a problem, nobody's there to shepherd that patch through our process. Typically, because when you get a volunteer um, that, you know, somebody that's a committer, maintainer, whatever, that's going to pick up that issue, it takes a lot of effort to go and do that and survey data again like most people that contribute to the project have between one and two hours or like under two hours to ten to under two hours is like more than 50 percent of our developer population um so if you want to go and pick up one issue and go run with it it's a 15 minute time how much time does it take so in a given day you can sit through and move through like four issues maybe with our given process because it's 15 30 minutes whatever there's just kind of cognitive if, if, whatever. You're, if you're really gonna go for it right I mean, otherwise it's gonna be that gonna go for it after the third week is right terrible. right <laughs> um and so that is one of the highest priority things that core is very 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 interested in um the other issue of somebody reports that there's a pro an issue or a problem um there's a different kind of like take on some of that which is Previously, like it's good to have like that you know input that says, hey, there's problems in the field with different pieces of software, um, and so that's that's an important signal from the community. Um, doesn't mean that we can necessarily act on it. There is a, an, ex, an, an expectation adjustment that needs to happen, which is you're looking for basically free support, which is fine, right. but you're basically getting what you pay for. If you want to go and see it as fixed, you know, right now there's there's a big hole in the community in the sense that you can't go pay somebody to go fix that really unless you go find like the right con consultant contract or whatever there's not like you can, like if you're some rando person on the internet that said hey it doesn't work and you're trying to provide this but it also is like a big enough issue that you'd like to go and kick some bucks at it potentially like unless you know a person you're not going to make any more forward progress on this problem um and that's a known problem and there's that's a larger problem conversation a whole lot of things um, and that's a source of lively discussion but not something that's going to be dealt with in the next year or two yeah well again you and i need to, to sit down yep did you see any of the graph stuff that i did with matt back in the old days yes those were great yeah <clears throat> I, I have lots of stale code that needs yeah. to be yeah okay you said about the right way I mean, I just see you smile, so. <laughs> I mean, I think one of the really annoying classes of PRs for me is if you see someone submit, I mean, on Fabricator or, or in PR, yeah. if you see someone submit a small patch that is, um, you know, they, there's clear demonstration that they've done the appropriate testing that right. I haven't done anyway, um, patch, there's no style issues or whatever, um, and you can just effectively apply it um, with, without really much more uh, effort than that, um, those are pretty easy. Yeah. The worst case is people who have gone through the effort of submitting a patch, um, and it is about 80% of where it needs to be, yeah. um, you know, and it's, that, that's a, a really challenging one, because if, if it's just total total crap, 
um, you know, it's easy enough to say it doesn't really like you can just you can just close the PR and say you know sorry this patch is not um, it's not acceptable or if the patch is misguided or it's not something we're going to want. But when it's someone who has has addressed the real issue, um, has a patch that works for them and is almost ready, um, but is either going to take uh, a committer four hours or eight hours to go through and actually clean things up and you know make it multi arch or whatever the case might be, or complain about style issues back and forth. Um, you know that that sort of thing. Those are the ones that often get ignored. Um, I think very much too often. Well, a lot of people, yeah. developers, uh, don't want to spend ten hours on an issue that doesn't want attention. And that's the that's the problem with commercial companies. And I've, I've dealt with this in my commercial career. That measure, you know, their metric is number of PRs works because there's PRs and PRs. There's you know change change the misspelling V, you know, which is a 30 second thing. And there's, by the way, this philosophy that you have for the interrupt stuff is, you know, and that can be weeks. So the, um, there's, there's the, the mechanism that we have to identify things with patches that are worth someone taking a look at is inadequate. And Coos and I have been talking about it for the last, uh, for a second, I've been talking about that, but we kind of talk past each other, but that's that's something I want to see happen this this summer because that's that's where that's where it falls apart. All this junk comes in, and there's a percentage of it that's useful, but we don't want to identify that. It's just so developers see this, and it's like screw that. The, it's um, too large. One of the things that was interesting at HashiCorp um, was they had a really large kind of fire open source community. At one point in time, uh, the Ter Terraform project in particular had a huge developer base. Um, I think in two years, that ended up being like 500,000 lines of code or something, something nuts like that. Um, and the total number of contributors, I was getting already blown up, um, was, was large. Um, and um, the gist of that is, is that the feedback systems to contributors was CI testing, running, integrating the test, and then you had HashiCorp employees that were basically like running over this stream of PRs that were coming in. Yes, this like sanity checks because like you know CI ran and we did all of our tests, but then also like you know there's not some like crazy you know RMRF kind of thing that was like just slotted. It's like it's a real thing, so great, and then it gets merged, right? Yeah. Um, and one developer in particular. Um, merged something in the neighborhood of like 150,000 lines of code because all of the infrastructure was there in place in order to identify this. And the game of, of open source at that point in time was when a PR comes in, A, how do you go and make sure that like, you know, it was sufficient quality and how do you put, provide kind of like the feedback to the community? Um, and the flip side, but the other part of that is, is how do you make sure that people that are reviewing this patch stream can have confidence in that infrastructure? And so it really became a game of, of how do you improve CI mm -hmm. so that people that go and, and you know are a part of this fire hose get their immediate feedback and then you know so you've got two things one you need real time feedback to your contributors so that they can you know chew on this problem which means that you've got a an explicit process that is codified and you know enforced by CI and then on the project side of things you have something that has gone through CI by the time you review it so you know it's not going to break world or whatever else. Um, and you can go look at it and low friction, like squash to merge, in the case of HashiCorp, because they used GitHub, um, squash to merge, and it goes and adds it, builds it, and it's part of the next release, and like, you know, change log entries, et cetera. Like, that's all done in basically low friction. So if you've got a bunch of small patches, you can go and merge 50 PRs in a day, and like, that happened to just be before lunch, yeah. right? And that was not uncommon. Um, and so those types of workflows exist. That's not how we're set up at the moment. No, no. Um, but like, yeah. Um, and so that's really like, we're in this. We're we're definitely in a, in a mode as a, as a project where we're going to be addressing some of this stuff, and um, we're we're going to be addressing some of this stuff. Um, yeah. Like there were twelve hundred committers to just Terraform Core. 24,000 commits, and that's before they broke out all of the provider modules to like you know separate libraries. Um, so that's just the core graph walking portion of things. 
1,200 committers. We don't have, we have 200, right? No, it's <laughs> uh, active, no, it's, it, it was three, 390, 300, 372 active developers. Uh, it was 397 for the developer survey. It was 370 what, for, the, for the, the community survey portion of things. Um, and then of those people that actually responded and actually like checked their email, um, yeah, it's it's closer to, to like you know just under two hundred. Okay, I'm, I'm going from my own knowledge that yeah. the the uh, committed files. Yeah. Um. So there you go. And to yeah, I think for for last thing, uh, uh, we can discuss more in the next CI working group. Yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, by way, go down to client format. That was a really good comment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go there. Okay. Uh, but uh, I would like to to check. Uh, and is this this is what you mentioned? Uh, that that's um, yeah. That's, I mean, that's part of it. The um, uh, the the patches that are not quite ready to uh, be merged directly, but mm -hmm. need a little bit of, of help. How do we um, we have a good problem with those? Yeah, okay. Uh, if it's possible, please uh, try to complete those things. Yeah, because um, at, at least uh, I hope uh, uh, to identify the, the problems and uh, the list which I and others can working on uh, after this working group. So uh, if, if you think it's possible, uh, help to take notes. And. Uh, from the ports perspective, it would be nice. Like the ideal ports workflow. There actually is. We could be used like Clojure test port before <clears throat> a, de a, men a developer goes and looks at it to have that just automatically run. Before. There actually is a piece of technology out there of ports. There is quietly committed by Debbie here a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. which is basically that front end. And, and I know Steve Wills has. Other pieces of it, yep. and it, it just kind of came and went very quietly. But we didn't, yeah, we didn't, uh, we didn't know this about it. But yeah, we can. We're, we're overdue for that. Yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, Podria pull request and uh, uh, I mean the no, po po ports flow. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One thing uh, currently it's still a work in progress is. Uh, Recently, I worked for a uh, different office port for a while, and uh, uh, one thing what I'm doing is I write a, a script to, um, I'm not sure this is a good usage of uh, service CI, so basically uh, uh, I just use, I, I, I install Podria in service CI and uh, uh, over, and uh, overlap my repository to our post tree and uh, just do uh, the post review for, uh, where it is, okay, here, do a post review of, uh, in service CI. So once I uh, uh, make any change to those <coughs> LibreOffice port, uh, I can get things wrong on uh, service CI to, to view all, uh, all those things before committed. Uh, this is not a, this is not providing uh, the same experience we have with uh, red ports. But I think uh, it's easier and uh, uh, just leverage external uh, uh, resources. Yeah, and uh, not uh, interfere the current process a lot. But this help people uh, test before submit, or even it's easier for, for developers to, to, to test. Because I think uh, as a, if you are a course committer, you probably need lots of uh, uh, resources to, to test. But uh, this tweet is uh, provide some, <coughs> some kind of help. Yeah. Right. And uh, uh, but yeah, that's another topic. Um, 
So yeah, for the current formation and the earth we are seeing, we have about 20 minutes. Uh, current format, I think uh, uh, this is not uh, really relative to, to full service or CI, but uh, uh, we can probably uh, put this into uh, fabricator or uh, soft, soft link, soft link, not the uh, hard rule. So we can use that to provide some suggestions. But, uh, yeah. but uh, the thing is, uh, uh, we need people to, to test uh, those integration in fabricator. But we do have a, a staging environment of fabricator. Thing is, um, uh, I think we need people uh, working on that. So, yeah, if you are interested, uh, please contact uh, Fabricator and me. Yeah, I'm also on that, but uh, uh, yeah, most of the time I just talk to people and say uh, we have a problem here. But, and uh, uh, the other things is. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a, a service called the MFT Tracker, which is uh, developed by, by uh, Ganzo, who is also a Ruby developer. And uh, many people are suggesting to move this service to ReviewT.org. But the thing is, uh, yeah, the thing is uh, how to move the existing help for a uh, uh, system into ReviewT.org. Yeah. And then the other thing is uh, uh, we are going to have a translation system. How, what is the best uh, workflow to propose and uh, set up a new uh, system in, in, in our cluster? Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, uh, in the past or currently, the <coughs> the, the workflow is uh, you submit you 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 still send the mail to cast and me and then try to grab somebody to uh, have the DNS and uh, uh, find a disco or a gel on on the cast machines and. Uh, uh, one thing I, I guess we need is a checklist or a, 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 a policies about how, what's the standard or how, how's the, what's the, the, the process to move uh, or set up a, a, a service in Ruby cluster. So, uh, Honestly, for me, I personally don't have much uh, idea about that. Uh, do, does anybody have any uh, idea for this? For checklist? Yeah, checklist or anything we we can make uh, provide providing new services more smoothly. Because currently, uh, for me, we wanted to have uh, our CI cluster probably. Uh, I think that takes almost uh, one year or more than that to set up all the, all the things we need. And the uh, grant got permission or so. Um, so I would like to know how do we improve both the uh, technical part and uh, the policy part. The policy part might be uh, we submit a proposal with FCP, with all the, uh, uh, with, yeah, again, some kind of list, such as uh, how do we deal with the account, how do we deal with the uh, maintenance, and uh, that system is security or not, or so, and uh, ask for vote. And uh, the other thing is, uh, do we provide uh, enough infrastructure in FreeBSD.org to provide, uh, to host the new services. Now currently we just use lots of uh, geos 
and uh, 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 for for the studies like uh, CI cluster because it is building lots of things and uh, it is accessible uh, from external. So uh, CI cluster is basically a separate machine learning in the previous video audio. So uh, the thing is, uh, how do we uh, formalize those things? For, uh, so we can use a uh, MPEG extractor and the uh, uh, translation system as an example and try to uh, formalize those projects. Yeah, so is there any uh, translation about that? CI needs to be part of the developer workflow and not something that's bolted on after commit. <laughs> there, I said it. Um, I think for the time being, how do we improve this is, a, that's a difficult, sticky question in the super, 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 super short term. Um, how do we improve this that involves some maybe workflow structural changes that are being discussed. And how do your developers build their stuff away? Does everybody have a different environment that they're on their stuff in? I mean, even if you just had like a, oh. a, a shell script that would run in 90% of the environments, but they, they might not even come to you until it passes on that. You'll have people that will really try to get through. Do you have any comment? Yeah, so the people that are the most successful in contributing to FreeBSD have built and bought their own lab that runs under their desk and they have a collection of hardware that they go in and run it against. Um, and that's far from optimal, but that just happens to be what kind of the situation is right now. Um, I think the core team and everybody that's involved in CI realizes that this is a big issue because the industry has basically evolved from like from this, like you've got your, everybody's got Macs or some box that they're SSHing into, but these are not build machines, right? If you're going to go into a build world, the last thing you want to do with this on is a four core or eight core laptop. Uh, what you'd much rather do this development on is, is like, you know, a 96 or 192 core machine. And this is like actually what is reasonable hardware. Um, and there's, because there's a lack of access to high end hardware, because the workflow is basically centered around what I can compile and do on my local machines, um, there's an interesting kind of shift that's happening where we're dealing with like, you know, we're dealing with problems that are detached from where the market is from a hardware perspective. Like we're not pushing the limits of 192 core kernels because most people don't have 192 core kernels to go and trip up and find where these problems are. And it turns out that if, as we make progress towards larger SMP workloads, we're seeing lots of low hanging fruit that you would think would have been found, but it's not because people are you know, working on four and eight core machines. So um, how do people build it? They check things out locally, they go do their work, they, they commit, test, build, whatever it is that they have locally, they push it to master or to head. Um, it breaks, we find out about it after the fact and then like mailing list posts ensue. Hopefully nobody had their feelings hurt. Fixes go back later, you know, after like, you know, everything gets settled. But this all happens in a very public way. So, so, so the type of issues that we find when we push the master, I mean, we're talking all like kernel SMP-ish stuff. There's nothing that's still applicable to four four. I mean, what we try to do is try to winnow down the problem of at least what we can find to, to, to you know, try them in simpler situations. It's like the same thing we have, right? We have we have these big filers that we really want to run it on, but we push it as close as we can to VMs in order to, uh, you know, if we get 80%, that's victory, right? Yeah. Like, so is there anything like that that is applicable to the core core, right? No, there's not, like, and that's the thing, like, so, um, yeah, hold on a second, I was, um, I was talking to Matus, I was gonna, well, let me go pull this up, because he found some goofy tempfs locking issue. Um, and, oh, let me see if I can take this out. He found some goofy tempfs locking issues and shaved like 
20% off of our build world. And it's kind of like, oh, we should. Like, it's amazing that we have low hanging fruits still like that, still kicking around. Um, but you wouldn't run into it in four core machines. You, you found it on the 96 core box. Yeah, the, the foundation funded can basically go and use build world and prepare um, as motivated use cases to fund mod yeah. dimensions and things on high core core machines. Yeah, but what? But he did that because the foundation basically pushed him at machines that were in cluster, as opposed to like having that be a part of the common workflow. Yeah. Right. Like tracking build world times over time would be really interesting for on a per server basis, per release basis, because that provides actually an interesting you know benchmark. Like you know world stone, right? Yeah. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Right. We, we need to bring him back for a scale. Yes. Because he had. Yeah. 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 That was great. But that's all built into most of these types of systems, but this information isn't a part of the developer workflow ethos. Like the KPI of like the key performance indicator, not kind of programming it, but the KPI of, and I know that some of this stuff is here, so please show. Um, but it's not where the developers go, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> right? Um, like that's not graphed somewhere so that people understand that the game of kernel performance and build world performance, we don't understand that things went. Got better or worse, right? Yeah, we haven't we haven't had much graphical feedback on pretty much anything in the last five or six years. Yeah. So uh, we, you know, we're showing the results now. Yeah. Um, like a year ago, we spent a lot at work at work building FreeBSD to get our build world times down to like three minutes from a clean checkout, right? Um, Two minutes. What was that? Two, three minutes. Build, build world that takes build, yeah, oh, build kernel, not build world. Oh, build okay. world was okay. build was fifteen <laughs> minutes, ten minutes. Okay. But that was because we stripped out Clang and did everything else, and we oh. deliberately made progress to get that down there, so that our cycle time for development was really low. Uh -huh. Like, I get the value of having Clang in base on some level, but it's some level like somebody said this yesterday, uh, and which was great. He said it's, it, we we ship a compiler with a kernel. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And if you look at the, like the, 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 the kilohertz spent on FreeBSD um, at a given machine, like we're a Clang operating system <laughs> with Clang being the dominant you know thing that we work on as far as like you know time that the, the operating system is spent recompiling. Yeah, I've tried working on ports on GC. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's not old GCC to build plan, you need to build plan, build plan. It's full yeah. build for an arm. Arm V6 is 104 hours, I think. Yeah, well, but no one does that. No, no. if they're sorry. Yeah. But or, or at least they don't do it more than once. Right. Yeah. More than yeah. The thing is, we need to check more uh, build uh, or other statistics yeah. uh, over the time. Uh, on, the other, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, we do check uh, build size trend. But it's, uh, I, so the information is there, right? But developers don't look at it because it's outside of the workflow, right? Oh. Like if you go and make a change, there's nothing that says this commit improved or slowed down build world times, yeah. right? That type of feedback doesn't exist in a real time way. Right? We might look at this graph um, and say, oh crap, so what happened is like regression. Two months ago, someone yeah. screwed something up and our build time went to crap. Right. Um, but that, 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 because it's outside of the outside of the workflow, outside of the process. Okay. The ideal world, you would have something that says like, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use GitHub as a, sorry, there's just some stuff here that yeah. makes it easy to talk about. Like the, when you go and commit to a branch, you push your PR, before you merge that PR back, you get back a couple of feedback. Did it build okay, right, as a type of test? Did it test okay? And what were the statistics in terms of like whether or not something made it better or worse? Yeah. Right? But when we get this integrated with Yeah. But like that's not something that we do currently and, and boy howdy wouldn't that be nice if we did it. Yeah, I think we need uh, I really I really hope we can have a, a, a team to work on those things. Core agrees. <laughs> what is that? What was that? Can you go to the back? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I mean, what, what I want to say is for this kind of thing, we will have uh, more time in the next hour. 
and uh, uh, for the web services, uh, yeah, I don't think we have enough time for uh, the translation system. And so okay, we have our number tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, mm, is there anything uh, you want to see or you find that it's a problem? We need to we need to help people to to work it out over all those uh, developing systems. I think we have some kind of uh, photo website mm -hmm. to show the all the services available in the future. You oh. uh, develop it. So for example, the new developer cannot find uh, all of the services. Yeah. Oh yeah, but all kinds of yeah, 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 we, we have, have internal and uh, we have um, yeah, we have developer. That video, but, uh, mm -hmm. Imagine that uh, if someone wants to contribute the part of the source tree, the part of the doc tree, uh, they know source tree and the source file, but uh, how to interact with uh, uh, associated PLs, the associated reviews, and they, so they cannot find the uh, where the uh, related information may be stored in a project mm -hmm. infrastructure. So um, uh, one so an idea from me is that uh, we have uh, Web pages associated with the uh, source tree, source directory structure, and the people can find the PL, the web use, and the other services link related to the file or directory from the uh, page. So you can look at the uh, specific page related to the specific part of the uh, module in the source tree and the ports. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, currently, we have a uh, variety of tools, but uh, every tool is independent. independent right. and, uh, we can we have to find the specific uh, PLs for the specific part. But uh, a page we can start with that. Uh, uh, so with, I mean, uh, uh, people just go to the place they are interested in. So that page shows the related information inside. And uh, so we can develop the dynamic page, which is from the CI system and the PL and the uh, web view database into uh, one page view. Mm -hmm. So it's so useful. That sounds like this. Or, yeah. yeah. Or, and uh, please uh, try to, to, to complete it. Yeah. Yeah. And we can um, improve the workflow uh, by using the, such kind of uh, uh, single page application. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, is there any other comments or questions? In tooling, we trust. <laughs> In, In tooling, we trust. Uh, yeah. In automation, we trust. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, one there's one uh, thing, one, one word, one line. My my when I was in graduate school, uh, a senior classmate told me that we should teach our skill. We should teach our tool to teach us doing better work every day. Which. Yeah, I believe having a, a having better tool and the easy use tool is very important to a, a, a development community, especially for those kind of this kind of uh, volunteer based. Mm -hmm. uh, we should optimize the for. I believe the highest priority, the highest priority thing is optimize the for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because. Um, most of us are working uh, in our spare time, so we need to make this process a uh, uh, interesting process. Yeah, then people can use this and they can work. Uh, then, so people can 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 still uh, spend time after a tiring day. Right. Uh, 
I think we it's uh, true thinking now, and uh, thanks for attending. And uh, if you um, so, I think I will going to create a, a, a IRC channel and then see if I can connect it to to Slack. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I will send a mail to develop a list to, to invite people to join. And uh, yeah, I think uh, at the first, uh, I don't expect the people to work in the office, but uh, uh, I'd like to know more about suggestions and uh, even uh, complaints. Then we can try to prioritize things. Yeah, and I have to do that. Right, so. Thanks again for joining. Thank you. Thank you. So nothing that we're doing is data driven. So we need to go get some data. And it's the first time the project's ever had some of this stuff, so it's it's kind of interesting. Different <laughs> 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 That's that's one way to put it. Yeah. Um, and so that's been a lot of work. Um, but the, and the results are sometimes not surprising, and sometimes they're it's surprising that this wasn't acted upon earlier because it turns out we did have some of the data three years ago and it was already compelling then. So, okay. So it's only become more compelling. Yeah. Oh, well. But like, I know. It's <laughs> Like I don't even bother. Like when I'm doing normal development for not FreeBSD things, I don't even bother compile testing or running my tests. I open up a I open up a pull request, I push a pull request, and CI tells me if it worked or not. Right? Because it's got like they've got more horsepower there. So they can do a full build of the last project that I was working on. Just get in a thing like 125,000 lines of code over the course of five months. Right? We were pushing somewhere in the neighborhood of like 70 PRs a day total. Like, I mean, it was just this huge flow of code. And we spent a lot of time working off of this new developer workflow because when we first started, we were using, so everything was, was Go. Um, we were, uh, we were using just go build dot slash dot dot dot. And it built stuff, but like we were to the point where it was a 20 minute build time, right? And that's a really long, slow 20 minute, yeah, no, like, yeah. Wow. It was a long, like it was not just for single binary, like there's like hundreds of, of different programs and things that were built and run. Um, we switched our tooling to use something that was basal like called Please, which was pretty game changing because um, then our build times on our CI systems for a fresh checkout, same code base, went from 20 minutes to 54 seconds. And then the incremental is like using on a CI system with stuff second, right? And then on my laptop, um, which would take still like six minutes to build um, because it's just one hundred hard compared to our CI systems. Six minute build, right? And then six minute build 
spicy on it, right? And it was easier in, in for a lot of the Go stuff um, because it's a much more simple language, but you know, um, I don't want to trivialize its performance elements of things like when you actually go and run the binary in the code. But that um, it was really, really nice. And focusing on developer tooling is an important part because then you can basically hook your brain directly up to your keyboard to get value to work product and you're not spending any of your executive capacity or cycles on fucking around with the process, which frankly, if it's expensive or hard to do or it takes time, you have to context switch between different tools and you lose your flow, you lose your train of thought. And then like, instead of doing 10 things in a day or 50 things in a day, you're doing like three things in a day because there's only so much context switching that a person can do before you run into mental fatigue, right? Um, so figuring out your processes is a significant portion of things. So a lot of you is the FreeBSD, Nineteen ninety nine with you know, building web pages yeah. and stores and all this stuff was way ahead of its time as you know the, the hand rolled stuff that we had the ports stuff port stuff yep and that was then yep this is now yep and the the whole the whole outside world has grown these other things and we're kind of like oh maybe if you look at CI maybe you should look at this maybe you should look at that you know it's just like everybody else is on today. Actually, you know, documentation. Yeah, we had great documentation on 1999. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the guy at the after pointed out. By the way, you know, the number one paycheck for previous PowerPC 64 has breaking news that they're on a Mac 5. Yeah. Okay. Here's the one in John. Kind of bring this thing, I guess. Yeah, you know that. So we have to use that. Suspicious stuff. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just want to check. Can you get me? Yeah. 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 Yeah.